Well, let's talk about uh, media and communication once again. And I'll start with a question. Greenwashing or genuine green giant? So I've invited uh, George Dikeos today to explore the International Maritime Organization's social media practices and policy branding in the fight against climate change. So with George today, we will explore some gaps between online profile and real action. George, welcome to our episode. Hi, hi, thank you for having me. So George, we do not have to dive into the importance of climate commitments at this point, I think, but you indicate uh, in the article the limited progress made by the, um, the International Maritime Organization in this sense, despite adopting strategies for reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So you embarked on this research because, well, there was apparently a disconnection between uh, policy intentions and actual outcomes, correct? Yes, thank you for this question. I mean, actually, the International Maritime Organization uh, started um, working on climate change back in the beginning of 2000, 2010s, actually, more um, concretely. But uh, in 2018, it adopted the first strategy, the initial strategy of the International Maritime Organization on greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and from that point, uh, it should have started ap applying climate commitments. The problem here is that they adopted the, com the commitments, but no one was there to implement them. So the problem here was, and that was the starting point of my research, that who would implement those commitments and uh, how the International Maritime Organization showcases that it actually does climate action when no one actually implements it. Okay, so, so tell us, can you tell yeah, us about our yeah. findings? Yes, so the findings are that, I mean, it's quite simple. The International Maritime Organization says that it promotes climate action while at the same moment, no action is taking place, um, at least at the governmental level, as I mean, International Maritime Organization is a governmental organization. Uh, the thing is that no uh, country actually adopts climate uh, regulations for shipping. Uh, the only exemption is uh, the European Union, of course, but again, uh, the implementation is still quite far. You mentioned in the article, this was a very interesting that what this allows, one of the things this allows is for the International Maritime Organization to set up its own narrative on climate fighting, while, as you said, the impact on international shipping regulations is not really enforced. So tell me more about that and some other practical implications of this study. Yes. So um, the International Maritime Organization, because the uh, public opinion is much more Keen uh, is much more open to uh, be receptive in climate action and wants to show that it does a lot on climate change, has started posting regularly on climate action and what it does to uh, combat climate change. The problem here is that... Sorry, I need again the question. <laughs> you can start over by the answer. Yeah, yeah, but can you repeat the question, please? Because I lost my train of thought. I will start again then. Uh, you mentioned in the article, this was very interesting, that the International Maritime Organization, uh, what this allows is to set its own narrative on climate fighting, while the impact on international shipping regulations, as you said, is not really enforced. So tell me more about that and some other practical implications. Yes, thank you. So the International Maritime Organization decided, I think, purposefully to start showing to the public that it does a lot on climate change. So it started consistently uploading posts on X, formerly Twitter, known as Twitter, that um, it uh, its action actually contributed to uh, the fight against climate change. The problem here was and is that all these actions do not actually lead uh, to the uh, to the fight against climate change. They do actually, but the amount of its contribution is are very small. Uh, so uh, 
do we really see uh, uh, an, an, an impactful action or they just highlight their very small actions against climate change? So this was what my, my thought when I was starting my uh, research that, okay, we say that we do a lot on climate and maybe we do, but is it enough? Yeah. Um, and what's ahead of us now? More case studies? So yes, the idea is to 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 see how I mean this this research was um, uh, initiated when I started reading uh, a lot of uh, research on how other uh, organizations, not uh, international organizations, but either governmental or NGOs or whatever, uh, try to to showcase what they do on climate change, and because my previous work was on international. National Maritime Organization and uh, how it uh, adopts uh, climate regulations, I thought that this is a good example of how a UN agency, uh, the International Maritime Organization, that has to follow actually what the United Nations say uh, about climate change, uh, do on climate change. And unfortunately, we have the gap here. And I mean, uh, for example, the International Energy as, um, Agent, Agency says that uh, shipping emissions are not on track uh, with uh, what they have to be uh, in order to uh, actually combat climate change. So yes, we need more, more research on those kind of topics mm -hmm. just to highlight that we need more, more action. Um, other than that, I think, I mean, this is uh, a research coming from a political science perspective with uh, media, uh, with a media orientation uh, to showcase that many times policy framing and policy branding is not compatible with policy action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to follow up on that and to know your uh, personal thoughts on this, uh, what struck you the most. But first... Uh, so I have, I have a question for you. I'll enjoy my role as moderator, of course. So um, you mentioned, uh, so when you start the research, the research, what I want to ask you is, how can the stakeholders, um, governments or NGOs or individuals, how can they use these findings uh, from this study to hold international organizations accountable? And then to hear your, you know, your personal thoughts on the, on the study. So what struck you the most? Yes, thanks. Um, so, well, uh, let me start from the last question. Um, the idea behind this research was that, come on, we, we have so much research on climate change. We know exactly what we need to do, but who does it? And I think, and this is exactly, the, I mean, this is how I'm going to answer this. the first question. Um, the problem here is that I think that no one is ready yet to actually do uh, and implement climate uh, action. So we have many, in, uh, I mean, we have all the governmental uh, institutions in all levels that are not uh, ready yet to actually implement climate change policies and uh, contribute to the fight against climate change. So um, I don't think that this study is gonna be very use useful for governmental uh, institutions, but uh, on uh, for NGOs or civil society, et cetera, it might be very useful to learn how to understand whether the actions that the organizations say that they do are actually contributing or not to uh, uh, the combating of climate change. It's, uh, well, it's not that they're not doing, if it's they're doing enough, as you said, well, several times during the episode. Uh, George, in no more than two sentences to close this episode, if there is anything you want our audience to remember about this talk, what would it be? Well, I think, I mean, again, I'm gonna repeat myself. Uh, we need actual action and not uh, only words. I mean, we have uh, many dead letters going around uh, regarding climate change and climate action. We need to uh, start using our power or whatever that is to implementing climate uh, change action 
to um sorry let me can i i want to say something different um and you can uh, start the question again just wait three seconds and then uh, you can answer again mm -hmm. can you repeat the question please oh sorry so i can no worries. I will start again. Let me just. I'm gonna give you just three seconds before I start, so that the editor knows that that's the spot he has to, mm -hmm. to start. Uh, so, George, to close this episode in the best way possible, this has been an episode uh, full of very good punchlines. But if you, if there is anything you want our audience to remember about this talk in no more than two sentences, what would it be? Well. I'm going to repeat myself and say that if we want the fight against climate change to be successful, we need to start actually implementing climate measures. We have many climate measures that are very good, but no one actually implements them. So we need action and not dead letters going around in the global sphere. Perfect. Great lesson. George, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So for all of those who are watching uh, on YouTube, uh, you can find all the resources, all the materials of this conversation, uh, the article that George uh, published in Media and Communication in the Let's Talk About Media and Communication website. And this episode is also available um, wherever you get your podcast. There's a newsletter you can subscribe to uh, stay in touch with the latest episodes. And we're also on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.